Hi, I'm Dr. Simmons, and today I'm doing my bicycle exercises. I like using a stationary bike because I can do my exercises while I'm sitting in my desk chair, working at the computer, or watching television. I can also do it anywhere at any time of the day, so often I like to do these exercises before bedtime. I like to do that because some studies have shown that the pressure applied to the bottom of the feet can help with neuropathy symptoms and restless leg syndrome symptoms. It also helps to increase the release of a hormone called melatonin, which is important for promoting sleep. The pedal bicycler is also nice if I can't bicycle outdoors. Sometimes it may be raining or really cold, the air quality may be bad, or there may be a lot of traffic, and that would make it unsafe to bicycle outside. So this is a great way to get my exercises in. It's also low impact, which means it helps with the joints. If I'm outdoors jogging and doing other exercises that cause an impact to the joints, over time, that can wear out what's called the meniscus in the knee. And there's actually more than one, so it's the menisci. And there are cushions that help to support the joint. But over time, if there's a lot of hard impact, they can wear down or be torn. And there can also be wear and tear on the cartilage that lines the top of the bones. And so the result is that the bones can grind together, that's called bone on bone, and wear each other out. And so that's what's called osteoarthritis, or the arthritis of wear and tear and chronic use. So I want to protect my joints whenever possible, and doing low impact exercises is a great way for doing that. With the pedal exerciser, I can have some variability in how many repetitions I do. So I like to tell myself, just do at least three, and that way I go ahead and overcome inertia. Inertia is a physics concept where a body that's at rest wants to stay at rest. And so if I can overcome that inertia and get going, I often end up doing more than three and do a lot, a lot more of exercising because I get momentum going, and that's another physics term. So with this, I can also help to vary how fast I go, and so that can impact how much of an aerobic workout this is. So if I go really fast, I can get my heart rate up, and that will be an aerobic workout. Um, but I can also go slower, and so that's great because sometimes in situations where there might be an arrhythmia or a regular heartbeat, such as atrial fibrillation, going kind of slow without getting the heart rate too high can be helpful. Now, doing just this simple motion really engages a lot of different muscles. So, I have the gluteus maximus and minimus, which are the buttock muscles. And then also coming into the thigh, there's what's called the quadricep muscles. And the quadriceps, it's called quad because there's four muscles that make up that group. The main one is called the rectus femoris. It's called femoris because the long bone in the thigh is the femur. Then in addition to the rectus femoris, there's the vastus medialis. Medial means in the center part of the body. The vastus lateralis, which means the lateral or outside part of the body. And then the vastus intermedius. It's intermediate in between the other two. So that's the four muscles of the quadricep in the thigh. Now underneath the thigh, there are some more muscles, and those are called the hamstrings. The three muscles that make up the hamstrings include the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and the biceps femoris. So it also has the name femur in there because of that long bone that's the femur. Now moving into the leg, that calf muscle is called the gastrocnemius muscle. And then there are other muscles involved as well, such as the anterior and posterior tibialis muscles, the soleus muscles, and the perineus muscles. So there are a lot of different muscles involved. There are further muscles that extend 
into the foot, and a lot of those are the flexor and extensor muscles. Now, in the thigh, there are two more muscles, and one crosses over the inner thigh, and that's called the sartorius muscle, and then there's a long, thin one that goes down the medial or intersection of the thigh, and that's called the gracilis muscle. Now, in the body, there are a lot of opposing muscles. So, you have flexion, which is flexing the joint, versus extension. And especially going into the lower part of the leg and into the foot, there are different extensor and flexor muscles. So, one way I can engage all of those muscles is to reverse direction. So, I've been going forward with the pedal, but I can also go backwards. And so that way I'm making sure that I engage all of those different muscles. So it's really nice to be able to do this simple motion and yet get all of those muscles involved, get the aerobic benefit as well. And on top of that, I get the release of endorphins, which are sort of like opioid containing substances in the body, but they're totally natural to the body. They're not from taking any kind of pills, but they really give a sense of well-being and happiness. So by doing the exercise, I end up wanting to do a lot more once I get over that initial inertia because of the nice release of endorphins, which helps to improve mood. So I'm going to keep doing my exercises. I'm Dr. Simmons, bicycling my way to a better life.